Hello, so now we're going to talk about formulas in tables. So in my previous example, we had a tab list and we converted it to a table, applied some basic formatting. Now we'd like to perform some math. Now you're going to see right away that this just isn't the easiest thing, nor is it intuitive. But uh, I'm going to walk you through it because there might be a reason why you need to do this at some point. So here I want to multiply these two things together. Uh, I don't know what your first reaction would be. Maybe just write something with an equal sign. It's not going to work. So what we have to do is we have to go to Table Tools, head over to the Layout tab, and the Formula button is sitting over here by itself. So it's easy to find. That's the good news. And then it's suggesting sum of the left. We don't want to sum. We do want that equal sign. But uh, we've got to pretend that we're using Excel. And so if you've never used Excel before, this just isn't going to go well. But if you have used Excel, then so in Excel, these are lettered. The columns are lettered. The rows are numbered. So this cell right here would be A, B, 1, 2. So it's B, 2. And this other cell that I want to multiply it by would be C, 2. And this number formatting is extremely cryptic. This, it looks worse than it is. There's only a few choices here. If you wanted currency, this looks like currency to me. It's the only one with the dollar sign in it. Here's a percent. Here's a couple decimal places. I mean, there's really not that many of them. I click OK and it seems to have worked. Of course, there's no fill handle or anything like that because this is not Excel. Uh, let's do the house it's. So again, it's not the sum. This time it is B3 times C3, and I'm going to go with that currency style again. This is going to be a little repetitive, but that's okay because it's a weird process. You might as well see it a couple times. And then B4 times C4, and I will go currency again. So not a very straightforward process, but once you've seen it, that's, that's how it works. We'll say I want to put a total row on this table. There's two ways I could do that. One would be to just insert below a new row. The other one is kind of a trick. When you are in the last cell of the table, if you press tab, you get a new row. And so, all right, totals. And so I don't want to add up the prices, but I do want to add up the units sold, so I'm going to head over to formula. Sum of above, well, that just happens to be correct this time. And as far as formatting goes, it's just going to be an integer, so I'm just going to leave it alone. I assume I probably could go with that, but I don't really see the incentive, so I'll just leave it. And over here, let's see what we have. Formula, it's suggesting sum of above. That looks correct. Let's go with that uh, currency format. Click OK. And we're good. You might be wondering at this point, would I be better off doing this in Excel? Absolutely. If what you're trying to do is analyze data and you want to get some formulas going, then yes, of course you should be doing this in Excel. Um, but... If what you need is a table and some, some math happening in a Word document, another approach would be to do it in Excel and then kind of import it over to Word. That doesn't work as well as I would like it to either. So it's not like this doesn't have a time and a place. It's just, right, it's not, it's not my preferred way of doing math, but uh, it works. Now, what we saw so far isn't too bad. The worst part is yet to come. So let's say these houses are actually $5.99. It's going to affect uh, this right here. So watch, it says 75.27. I'm going to change this and nothing. So that's literally the worst part about table math is you actually have to go and update everything. So you have to realize that there's a field here. Right click, update the field, and it changed. Now that was good, but this grand total also has problems now. So update field. And so if you thought that this was a pretty reasonable process, now you probably are saying to yourself that it's not, because it's not that reasonable. Um, but as you get better at Word and you get into some of the more advanced things, you learn that all the automatic stuff in Word has to be updated. Now let me show you something else. That's one way of doing it. Let's say I sold 25 of these guys. So I'm going to need to update that, and I'm going to need to update that. Well, lucky for us, there's actually a keyboard shortcut which updates all the fields in the document. So you're, if you watch, these two numbers are going to change when I press F9. Now i got to select things and press F9. I selected things or selected everything by pressing on that, which means select all. So F9 is, is definitely your update all fields. That makes it not so bad. Typically when I'm doing a big Word document with a lot of elements in it, the last thing I do, I just go Control-A, 
select everything, and then I press F9 just to make sure that everything's updated. Sometimes you'll get some prompts and such. Anyway, so those are formulas in a word table. So they're a little bit messy. Um, there's some problems with it, but there might come a time and a place where you need to do them.